Amen. Happy New Year, everyone. Just want to open up and say I love you all so very much. Love you guys so very much. And uh, it's been an amazing, I love you. And it's been amazing 2015, but I, I'm just believing like every year that we have a greater for 2016. Amen? How many of you have the faith for that? I mean, maybe some of you. Maybe some of you are questioning that, but now I'm going to ask you that again. How many of you are believing and have faith that 2016 is going to be a great year for you? Amen? Now, we got to have faith, right? I mean, if you're beginning your year without any type of faith, then I hope by the end of today that you will walk out of here with a renewed mind, a new perspective, you know, and, and you walk out of here feeling empowered and encouraged. Amen? Let me ask you this. What are your goals for 2016? Do you have any goals? Do you have any personal goals, occupational goals? What are your goals? I'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds, but that's not, I mean, you can have a, a, a whole month if you want, but just this morning, for the sake of the message, I want you to get your notes out. Do you have a note? If you do not have notes, I want you to lift up your hands and say, I don't have a note. We'll, we'll, we will get some to you. I want you to take 30 seconds and to write down what's on your heart. What is your goal for this year? What is there one thing that you would like to accomplish in your personal life or occupational or ministerial, whatever that is, relational? I want you to write that down. For the sake of this, this message that God is going to give to you today. Okay, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Ready? One, two, three, go. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> the old people know they're the ones laughing. They know what that is. The old the old people. The young people have no clue. Only the old people know what that is. Okay, no pressure. You can go home and figure that out. But here, here's the thing. Let us begin this year by stepping out in faith in a biblical way. Okay, say biblical way. Look at your neighbor and say biblical way. In fact, I didn't write it down. I want you to write down on the side in a biblical way. I did that on purpose. Because the biblical way, there is a definite need, whatever that is that you wrote down, whatever that goal is, there's a definite need that you need God. That's a biblical way. That you absolutely need God's divine intervention or his strength or his power, his wisdom to accomplish this goal. All right? In a biblical way. There is a need that you need the Lord to walk with you. God bless you. My first God bless you in 2016. First Hachu. Right? That you definitely need the Lord to walk with you through every step of the way. That is the biblical, in a biblical sense, that type of faith. Amen? So today, what is, we're going to answer these three questions. What is stepping out in faith? We use that so very loosely, especially in the church. Go ahead, go ahead and step out in faith. Step out in faith. Step out in faith. But what is stepping out in faith? Believe it or not, you step out in faith all the time. Maybe not biblically. Amen? 
But you just, you, you do things without even thinking about it. You step out in faith. You went to your car this morning and you stuck your keys in there and you had faith that that car is going to start. Most of you, maybe some of your cars are going, you needed God. No, it's a biblical faith. Oh, God, help me start this car. Right? But we do it all the time. Okay? So why, what, is, what does it mean to step out in faith? Why is stepping out in faith necessary for a Christian? And what should be the criteria of stepping out in faith biblically? So number one, let's get to number one. Number one is what is stepping out in faith? This is going to be our title deed scripture. Say title deed for the whole month. I want you to read this with me. Hebrews 11.1. Hebrews 11.1. Read it with me. Ready? One, two, three, go. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So it's saying faith is a substance and faith is an evidence. Faith is substance and faith is evidence. The Bible says in Romans that every man, everyone is given a measure of faith. We all have a measure of faith that is already created in us. God created us that way. We have a measure of faith. That you live out every day. But the biblical faith is here. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Faith is substance and evidence. Stepping out in that faith or substance and evidence is this. Stepping out in faith is putting your faith, the substance and evidence, into action for the things you hope for. If you look at the scriptures in the Greek, that evidence is the title deed. That's what I mentioned earlier. Like a title deed, like a deed, that's your evidence. And what's the deed? What's the title deed? What is your evidence of your faith? It's the word of God. Say the word of God. Okay? It's not somebody on TV. It's the word of God. It's not your pastor. It's the word of God. So your faith has substance. And it is the evidence of the things that you hope for. So stepping out in faith biblically, all right, is putting that faith to action. You have to put that faith to action. You have to move with that substance and that evidence that you have. Are you with me? All right? See, just having faith is not enough. Putting faith to action is being deliberate. All right? It's a move on your part. It's a conscious decision. It's moving in the direction of what you are confessing. Amen? Right? If you're confessing this year, I'm going to have the best relationship in my marriage ever this year, then you got to move in that. Correct? Correct? You can't just say it. You can't say, oh, pastor, I have believe I have faith. I'm going to have a great marriage. And do nothing. Come on, guys. Right? If we men say we're going to have a, an awesome relationship, you can't just have faith and say it. We have to put that to action. Likewise for the women. Likewise for you young people in your relationships or in your school. If you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn this year. I'm going to be focused. I'm going to do all my homework. I'm going to do everything to accomplish what God has for me. Well, then you got to put that to action. Amen? Right? So that faith... The substance, the evidence, has to be put to action. If I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, that he is truly the Son of God, right? If he's truly the Son of God, and through him all things were created, including myself, that faith that I have in the Lord has to be put to action. I have to live that out. Correct? Amen? It's not enough. It's going beyond your own limit. Look at your neighbor and say, go beyond your own limit. And, I, you know, I didn't say this in the beginning, but I want to just say this to you all. I am just the messenger. <laughs> I am just the messenger. Okay? I love you all, but I am just the messenger. You can shoot me. I got a bulletproof vest. <laughs> Holy Spirit kind. 
But I am just the messenger, all right? And this faith in action goes beyond your own limits. See, and a lot of times we limit ourselves. We see ourselves as how we see ourselves. We tell ourselves, I'm this, I'm that, I'm not good, I'm this and that, rather than God sees you in another way. Amen? Are you with me? I am just the messenger. I am just the messenger. So, again, stepping out in faith goes beyond your limits. It's, it's this thing where you really need God. That's a biblical faith. It's not faith if you, you can do it on your own. Correct? Believe me, we in our leadership, in our church, we had a great time of celebration. And we have a one-year plan, a three-year plan, a five-year plan, and a ten-year plan. And this thing is amazing. And you know why it's amazing? Because it goes beyond of, of who we are. Amen? That's stepping out in faith. Going beyond your lips, stepping outside of the box. James says this in chapter 2. He says, in the same way, faith by itself, it is, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Wow. Think about that. What he was saying, when you read that chapter, he was saying, look, you can tell me you have faith, but I'll show you I have faith and I have action. Amen? So he says to, to these people, you got faith, but let, let me tell you what. I have faith and action. It's not enough just to have faith. I'm not talking about saving faith. The saving faith that you have, I believe in Christ. Okay, now we're going to work it out. Now you're going to work out the action part. And I believe this is where the church or we as believers really get stuck here. Because we have faith and we say it, but there is no action to that faith. Amen? Are you with me? I am just the messenger. Amen? Right? You know, we went through a CR, which is a, a we went through our leadership and vol volunteers. And, and I just want to share this. It's one day at a time. It's one day at a time. Right? Your faith is just one day at a time. You don't have to conquer the whole world right away in one day. It's conquer one day at a time. Amen? And that's what you're going to do this year, one day at a time. Somebody praise the Lord. All right? So put your faith to action. It's substance. It's the evidence. we got to put that to action. Number two, so why is stepping out in faith necessary for every Christian? Why is it necessary? I want you to circle Christian. Circle the word Christian. Hebrews is speaking to who? Believers. Hebrew believers. All right? So therefore, what is a Christian? A Christian is one who believes in Jesus. Really, really important here. Because I want to just clear that up. Many times we can just say, well, I believe in God. Well, that's not good enough. Jesus, you need to believe in Jesus to be a Christian. Christ Jesus. This is where Jesus becomes the stumbling block for many. And it happened way back then. That's why they crucified him because he was not the Messiah. He was not the anointed one that they wanted to see. It didn't fit their box. It didn't fit their picture so therefore, this still happens today. We say, I believe in God, but Jesus, uh, right? If you are a Christian, the key is believing who Jesus is. That Jesus is the son of God who came from heaven to earth and we just celebrated Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. To share about the kingdom, to share about the glory, to have fullness of life, to have everlasting life. Amen? So, if you believe in Jesus, now it's very important that you now step out in faith. Is that clear? Does that make sense? To be a Christian, you have to believe in Christ. Amen? 
It's not enough just to say, I believe in God. I've come across many people that, and genuinely, they believe in God. But they don't believe in Jesus. And that, that's, that's where the gospel comes in. You want to understand why he came, that he died on a cross for our sins, that we could have everlasting life, we could be forgiven. Amen? Okay, so now, if you receive Christ as your Lord and you believe that he is who he is, the son of the living God, right? This is why it's necessary for every Christian to step out in faith. This is why it's important to put it into action is this. Number one, it is the proving ground for God's existence in you. Stepping out in faith, that biblical faith that goes beyond your own strength, and trusting in God in every step of the way is the proving ground. Look at your neighbor and say, it's the proving ground. <clears throat> Encourage someone and say, you got a good proving ground. <laughs> All right? This is where you prove. This is where you exercise. This is where that faith is developed when you step out in faith. Amen? Let me ask you this. What in your life that you need to step out in faith in? What is that God calling you to do to step out in faith? Amen? Every man has been given a measure of faith. You have to exercise that faith. How many of you are going to be healthier this year? Well, quite a few. How many of you haven't decided about being healthier this year? <laughs> you know the funny thing I was thinking about that this morning because that wasn't on my list you know and I was thinking about I was like man I should be healthier this year but I should correct all right but it's like exercising you got to exercise your faith that's the proving ground amen I remember a long time ago 30 years the day before I married Caron, my beautiful wife, <clears throat> I remember I made a commitment to God. And, and it, I wasn't like full on into church like I am now. I, I've been to church. I received the gospel of Jesus Christ in my life. I understood the salvation part. But I wasn't necessarily stepping out in faith and doing all these things that I'm talking about, you know, having that biblical faith. And I remember... Because one of my fears was getting married. Some of you guys can identify. But one of my fears was I was so afraid to get married. In fact, I dated her for like 25 years. <laughs> How many years? It felt like 25. What's five? Yeah. <laughs> it felt like 25. <laughs> Hurry up, marry me. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. It's just a joke. That was a joke. I am the messenger of that joke. <laughs> but um, I remember, and God wants me to share this with you because he told me, do you remember, Lance? Do you remember? And I remember that I was driving in my car on Hunakai Lane coming past Kahala Mall, and I was heading down, and I looked up in the clouds in my VW Bug because I had this little sunroof. And I looked up, and I remember I was, jump, I was about to step into the biggest thing ever in my life because I was afraid of getting married. I come from a broken family, and, and definitely there's hurts there, fears, all these things that was coming at me because I didn't want to fail. And I remember driving and looking up in the clouds, you know, looking up like, okay, God... <laughs> If you get me through this, I, I'm going to, I'll serve you. And little, little did I know what that meant. <laughs> because at that day, back in that day, my serving was, I'm just going to be a good guy. <laughs> I'll stop this stuff. I'll stop all this stuff and do all these things. Right? I'm going to be a good guy, you know. I'll obey the law, you know. That kind of thing in my brain, but <laughs> but not knowing what really 
what's going to happen. And then, see, that's the thing I'm talking about. Then it's the proving of your faith. This is where the stepping out, this is where you learn and you exercise your faith. So it's been a journey to grow in that faith. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Your faith right now can grow, okay? And whatever, wherever it's at, you need to exercise that. And the reason why, if you are a Christian, that you have to, because it's a proving ground for your, the existence of God in you. Amen? It's a proving ground. It's like saying, man, God really exists. Which takes me to, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's an act of worship. When you step out in faith, biblically, it's an act of worship. It worships God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's worship God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So again, your stepping out of faith is a proving ground. And also, as a Christian, why it's necessary, it demonstrates God's existence in you. It's a proving ground. This is where you exercise and grow, but it demonstrates God's existence in you. And for me, it was that aha moment. Throughout your life, you're going to have that aha moment. It's like, wow, ah, I remember, whoa, God, you are real. You are so real. So many times in my life and in your life, you will find those moments where it's like, God, you're real. How many times, honey, that we thought, that how we're going to pay the rent, and we were faithful to our tithe. We were faithful. And how many times it came through, and even in the mail, exact amount. It's crazy. Why? Why? Because you exercise your faith. I'm, now, I want to I wanna just take off some of that weight of what I just said. It's not about just getting the provision, Okay? It's not about the answered prayer. What it is, it's about that relationship. It's about that trust. It's about your faith growing and believing in Jesus. Okay? The other stuff is the, the, it's the, it's the, it's the cream on the cake, you know? It's the frosting on the cake. Amen? So I say that with, again, giving glory to the Lord and what he is and what he does. So your stepping out in faith demonstrates God's existence. And in this chapter, Hebrews 11, there lists a whole bunch of men and women of faith. And this is one of them, Hebrews 11:7. It says here, by faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. Noah heard from God, I want you to build a boat. <laughs> I want you to build an ark, a boat. Because I'm going to flood this earth. I'm going to destroy everything except for your family and the animals. That's how much faith Noah had. In holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. And by his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. And through that line came Jesus. Through that line came Jesus, okay, the Savior of the world. What faith is that? That's crazy faith, action faith. You know how long it took him to build this boat or this ship or this ark? About 100 years. Could you imagine <laughs> building a boat in the middle of nowhere? That's a lot of faith. But check this out. What was the final result? What was the end result of that? Yes, his family was saved, but guess what? It was all glory to who? God. To show forth who he is. Amen? That's the final result. You're stepping out in faith. You're using the evidence, the substance of your faith. Stepping out is all in the end for glory for God. Amen? Glory to God. Read Ephesians 3.20 with me. Ready? One, two, three, go. 
Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. All the glory to God gives us that empowerment to accomplish everything more than you can ask or think. Amen? More than you can ask or think. So biblical faith goes beyond. It has perseverance. It has stamina. Lastly, number three. Number three, what are the criteria for stepping out in faith? Biblical faith. Again, number one, Jesus must be the focus of your faith. I want you to tell your neighbor that. Jesus must be my focus. If you're in a relationship, Jesus must be your focus. If you're focusing on school or accomplishing uh, 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 occupation or business, Jesus must be your focus. Many times the focus of Jesus gets blurred. All right? The focus of Jesus is blurred and our faith gets blurred. We have to refocus on Jesus. It's real key. Jesus is the answer. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, is the connecting point to help you continue to step out in faith. All right? He is the connecting point. And what you have to do to keep that connection is to remove, say remove, okay? Remove every hindrance. Okay? Remove every hindrance that stops that connection. That may blur, say blur, your vision of Christ. Because many times it gets blurred. We kind of forget. We just kind of, oh, you know, Jesus is not in focus. It's out of focus. Amen? Here we go. Chapter 11 gave many examples of those around us, stepping into chapter 12, Hebrews, and this is what it says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So interesting from Chapter 11, talking about the type of faith and the type of people that had faith. In verse in chapter 12, he says, now what? We have a lot of witnesses. We have a lot of people that have been through this. You're not alone. Okay? You're not alone. He says, get rid of stuff that hinders you. Look at your neighbor and say, i got to get rid of some stuff. We got a lot of junk in the trunk. <laughs> got to get rid of the junk. How many of you been cleaning out your house? How many of you got to purge? You got to purge your house. I got to purge, man. I still have a whole pot in my yard got to purge. <laughs> but there's a spiritual purging here. We got to get rid of stuff. You got to get rid of stuff. Which so easily entangles us. And hinders us. Amen? I am just the messenger. And let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Get rid of the junk. Get rid of the junk. Verse 2. Here's the focusing. Here's the focusing. Refocus. Fixing your eyes on what? Jesus. The pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He is the example. And that's why I'm saying he must be the focus. He endured the cross. He endured and he persevered. That's the same thing with us. When we step out in faith, we're going to endure because he's that example. Verse 3, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Look at your neighbor and say, don't grow weary. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Okay? How many of you just are so blessed with our young people in our church? 
No, seriously, man, I am so blessed. At their age, whether they're high schoolers or college age, at their age, there was no way I would be like them in church and serving in an amazing way. I would like to call up Kian and Haley. We will welcome them. Give them a big God bless you. Yeah, I got you. Oh, you want the same size too? Okay, son. I, I, I'll do anything. I'm here to serve. Hi, Haley. Hi. You know, and and here's the thing about our young people, and this is this is what's so beautiful. Uh, about our church is that, well, any church, I would just say that it's so inspiring to have, thanks, so inspiring to have, see hearts that are growing in their faith, amen, and, and really stepping out in faith. So, and they're going to share a song about what really helps them. So this song is called Holy Spirit. You guys probably heard it. Feel free to sing along. Um, but the importance of the Holy Spirit in our faith is um, that the Holy Spirit is the closest thing we have to a tangible God. The Holy Spirit fills us. It um, gives us hope. Um, Galatians 5.5 5 says, For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. And Holy Spirit is our best friend. And here we go.
just become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us be. cry. Make me cry. Don't lose heart. Don't grow weary. The next thing, as Jesus is your focus, is that your faith must comply with the word of God. Simple. I mean, it has to comply with the word of God. It has to meet what God's words says. Amen? If you're having faith to go rob a bank and it doesn't, you can't find it in Scripture, then that's not biblical faith. Amen? If, if your faith is, I want to leave my marriage, then that's not biblical faith. Amen? Amen? It has to align with the word of God. Then it's biblical faith. Amen? When God blesses, biblical faith. And lastly, what I wrote down a year ago when I went on my retreat. Well, not a year ago. We just, had, we just left, but right, September, <clears throat> is that it's not time to be lazy. Don't be lazy in your faith. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be lazy. Look at somebody else and say, let's get a move on. Okay? Get off of our spiritual behinds. <laughs> Can I say that in church? Get off your spiritual behinds. Oh, I can just say, get off your okole. Right? I really believe that this is the time of year that we don't relax. Right? You get busy. You get busy. Don't wait till the end of the year or the middle of the year to go, oh, now I got to get busy and try to catch up. No. There's a spiritual principle in that of if you're just lazy and it's in the natural too if you're lazy in the natural you're gonna you're gonna be in poverty amen all right hebrew 6 continuing on in that same faith and that same thought from chapter <clears throat> it says we do not want you to become lazy but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. So it's saying 
church, don't be lazy. We don't want you to be lazy. Your leadership don't want you to be lazy. But we want you to focus. Again, there's a cloud of witnesses. There's a lot of people around you that have been walking in faith that you can look up to, that you can draw from. Amen? We have many people around you that you can draw from if you're feeling like you're losing your faith. Amen? I love this proverb because it is in a natural sense, but it's also it's a spiritual sense. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provision in summer and gathers its food at harvest. It says here, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. It's not time to be lazy. Amen? It's time to get move on. It's time to get excited. It's time to really fan that flame within you and, and write down that plan, dedicate it to God, and step out in faith in a biblical way. Amen? Amen? All right? And that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to start this year together. Amen? So let us pray. Let us pray. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Would you just... I want you to just again do an inventory of your heart, inventory of your life, inventory of where you are headed. What is the biggest challenge that you have? What is the greatest step of faith that you need to step out in and give to the Lord? What is that? Because God is going to go beyond you. Let me tell you what, it's not going to be in your own strength. It's something that goes beyond you. It's something that you're going to have to surrender to God and say, Lord, I'm going to need you to walk with me step by step by step. But again, it's in a biblical sense that Jesus is the focus. It aligns with his word. Amen. It's going to prove it's the proving ground in your heart, your faith. It's going to prove that God's existence in you. And the first thing I said, you need to be a Christian. What is that? You need to receive Christ. You need to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. The famous scripture of the gospel of Jesus Christ is this, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, that means he loves you. That means he, you're not, you don't have to be perfect. That means it's not what you've been through and what, not, what you've done. He just, for God so loved the world. You can put your name in there. For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever would believe, that word, believe, would not perish, would not die, but have everlasting life. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the whole purpose of your faith. That is where your faith hinges on the gospel of Jesus. That is where everything springs forth from. All the blessings, all the provision, all the strength, all the things that you need springs from this gospel. God wants you to be with him forever. All eternity. And if that's you this morning, Jesus said these words about this. If you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. You can know without a shadow of a doubt today that if you die today, you will be in heaven. And not only that, the blessings upon that is that you're stepping out in faith, he's going to be there every step of the way. 
So if that's you this morning in your heart, you're feeling that tug that you need his help, you need the Lord. You don't have to know everything, but just know that he loves you so very much and he's so personal. He understands your struggles. He understands everything in your life. And if that's you, I would be honored to be that person that you would confess before men. If that's you this morning and you need to just even surrender a certain things to the Lord, if that's you this morning, on the count of three, just look up at me. Ready? One, two, three. I see you. 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 Back there, yes. Go ahead. I see you. Looking over here. I see you back there. I see you, brother. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. I'm going to wait because God's telling me to wait. I see you. Jesus Christ has to be it. See you back there. Yes. Well, Lord, this morning on this first Sunday, just come in agreement with this prayer. Lord, I've taken step of faith. I acknowledge you. I've looked up at the pastor. I've looked at him in my heart, Lord. And today, I receive and I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you and I receive you in my life. I receive your promises. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your direction. And today I pray that the, your Holy Spirit, like that song, would come and meet me and fill me and dwell in my heart. The Lord, you would help me with the next step. Because the next step is scary, Lord. Sometimes it's scary, but Lord, that's how I know that I need you. And Lord, today we step out in faith. We step out in faith in a biblical way. And pray this. We pray this. Now, Lord, I pray for those who looked up. I pray, Lord, for a new anointing. I pray, Lord God, for a special blessing, Lord. The Lord, today when they leave, is, is just a brand new day, a new perspective. That everything through the lens of their eyes will be seen through you, Lord God. That you would reveal, you would see the hindrances that they need to tear down. You would, they would see and understand those things that we need to get out of the way. But also, Lord, they would also see those that they, you have surrounded them with. A cloud of witnesses men and women of faith that they can hang on to, that they can help and hold on to also, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen and amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. Would you all actually do not stand yet. Uh, actually, I got one more thing. Is that okay? I love you guys. You guys ready? I feel like the God wants uh, to do something. Let's, let's dedicate our plans to the Lord together. How's that? Okay? Let's do that. If you got it on your paper, or if you got it in your heart, um, just for a moment, uh, when, you, when you got that one thing or where a few things, we're going to dedicate that together. Can we just, and when you got that one thing or two things or three things, lift up your hands so I know that you got that goal or that thing in your life that you want to accomplish that we're going to dedicate to the Lord together. Okay? So whatever that is, just... You know, and if you're with your spouse, if it's, a to, if, it's a, if it's a together thing, then you can hold your spouse's hands or whomever, whatever, okay? All right? So, 
I'm going to wait a bit because everybody's got to have something that you want to accomplish and step out in faith in. And let's dedicate that to the Lord together. 2016, it's going to be an amazing, amazing year. Amazing year, right, author? It's going to be amazing. Amen. Wow. Lord, look at us. Lord, look at us. Look at your church. Look at your people, Lord. We stand here, Lord, as a witness of who you are. We stand as a witness of what's to come, Lord. We are stepping out in faith in accordance with your word. We believe, Lord God, that you're going to help us to accomplish all those things that you put on our heart that is aligned with your word. We believe, Lord God, that it's going to be extraordinary, Lord God, that, Lord, our faith is going to grow in us, Lord God, and we will be witnesses of who you are in our lives, Lord God. We believe, Lord God, and we commit to you, Lord God, that our church, Lord God, is going to grow stronger and stronger in faith in you, Lord God, that our relationships will grow strong together, Lord God, and Lord, there is nothing that will hinder us in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Woo! Somebody praise the Lord.